Great, well, thank you so much. Uh, it's wonderful to be here. It's a true honor uh, to be doing this talk here at Spark Summit. Um, I came to Spark Summit the first time a couple of years ago, and I was really blown away by the innovation that, that I saw here. And so what I'm hopefully going to share with you is kind of where we've gone as Shell since then, how we're using Spark, and how it's becoming an increasingly important part of what we're trying to do with advanced analytics. So I'm the general manager for the Advanced Analytics Center of Excellence at Shell. Um, and what I want to talk to you about today is digitalizing the core of our business. So how analytics and advanced analytics is shaping the energy industry. I think hopefully most of you are familiar with Shell. We're a huge global company. Um, most of you will probably be familiar with us from our 43,000 retail stores worldwide, making us the, the largest single branded retailer. But that's not all we do. We're an integrated energy company, starting with upstream uh, in the hydrocarbon supply chain, uh, through trading, manufacturing, delivering products to customers, and as I said, our retail sites. We also do much more than that, though. Increasingly, we're present in wind, in solar, uh, in carbon capture and storage, and most recently in electric mobility. And what this is illustrating is that we as a company, but also the world generally, is at the point of an energy transition. The world's population is going to grow by about 2 billion people by 2050. And as, has, Han, as Hans Rosling would tell us, those people are going to get healthier and wealthier. And of course, that means that their demand for energy is going to increase. We estimate that it's, about, it's going to double. And that's a real challenge because on the one hand, there's a, that demand for energy increasing. And on the other hand, the, the reality of climate change stares us in the face. And we have significant challenges if we're going to limit global warming. So for us, the question is, how do we deal with that energy transition? How do we deal with the demand of our customers for more and cleaner energy, whilst at the same time ensuring that we provide it in the right way, in a more effective and efficient way? So that was the first transition, a transition in the energy industry. I'm going to talk now about a transformation, and it's a transformation in data. We at Shell have been at the forefront of data research for many, many years. We have between 60 and 70 petabytes of data stored on disk, which is about 150 times the size of YouTube's library. That said, whilst we've been leading in this seismic area for a very, very long time, because that's where the majority of our data is, at the same time, outside of Shell, the world of data is transforming at an alarming rate. And we see that's being driven by things like the cost of sensors, the cost of bandwidth, the cost of processing power, and importantly, uh, the cost of infrastructure and storage. For us in particular, the ability to offload workloads to the cloud and leverage uh, performant infrastructure where previously we would have had to have used scientific grade high performance computing is an extremely exciting opportunity. But we also need to think about the world of data outside and where previously companies like us owned the vast majority of the data and stored it on disk and were able to use that to competitive advantage, increasingly we see that the majority of the world's data is outside and that's creating new opportunities and new business models. So, so let me talk about that. The energy industry is, in my opinion, ready for disruption, and we see it happening already. And this is both an opportunity and a threat for Shell. On the one hand, it's an opportunity. We are an integrated energy company, as I've already mentioned. We have a vast amount of data around our core value chain, collected over many, many, many years. And so the opportunity is to leverage that data to create more efficient and more effective ways of doing business, but also to create adjacent business models, providing new services for our customers and for our partners. But at the same time, those around us are not standing still. And we see a lot of the traditional companies that have worked with us uh, giving services or selling us equipment, starting to transform into providing those things as digital services. 
Similarly, other retailers in, in the retail sector are starting to operate in the fuel sector and starting to do that on top of their existing business, for example, the supermarket chains. And that's just a couple of examples. I could go on, and you see a number on the slide here. But that challenge, that opportunity, and that threat is mainly driven by data, and in my opinion, by analytics, because at the core of being able to provide these new services, these more effective, efficient, and augmented capabilities, is an analytics capability that turns that data into new insight. So at Shell, we look at analytics in a very particular way. We look at it with two lenses. On the one hand, we talk about the importance of descriptive and diagnostic analytics. In other words, what happened and why did it happen in our business? On the other hand, we talk about advanced analytics, trying to predict, trying to prescribe, or trying to provide advice, differentiated advice, to people within our business. The world of management information and business intelligence is going to continue to be vitally important, and we will continue to invest there. But we also see a big opportunity in this digital transformation around advanced analytics, where we start to provide some of the services that I talked about in addition to our core business model, but also we provide some of these services in such a way that we transform the way that our core business operates today, making it more effective and more efficient. And that's what I'm going to focus on over the next few minutes. So how do we do that? How do we do that as an advanced analytics center of excellence? We do three things, really, as a team. The first is that we select the foundational technologies, the platform, if you will, that Shell is going to use for advanced analytics. The second thing is we leverage that platform to showcase out of the possible for our business colleagues. So we try to demonstrate as a center of excellence what is possible and the impact that it can have on our business. We do that by selecting use cases that have high value and high profile, and we try to select technologies that are innovative and differentiated and that are going to drive that sort of fast bottom line benefit, demonstrating the potential of this for our industry. And the final thing that we do is we also try to facilitate best practice sharing through a network of analytics professionals across Shell. To give you an idea, we have around 1,100 analytics professionals across Shell as part of our network. And we run monthly, sometimes two or three times a month events where we get over 100 people showing up to learn about a new technology, a new approach, or a use case somewhere in our business. For us, this is about trying to share what we do and democratize a capability. That's really important. We're not going to do this ourselves in a company the size of Shell. That's just not possible. And actually, as the energy industry has long been extremely based in science and engineering. And if we can leverage some of the skills and talents that we already have within our organization, within our subsurface and wells disciplines, uh, within our engineering disciplines. We have huge opportunities to leverage the sorts of technologies that we're talking about here uh, and leverage advanced analytics. And we also try and make it easy for people to gain access to these technologies, and we do this through an analytics lab. We make our platform available as effectively a data science workbench, which provides people an easy way in to gain access to the sorts of technologies we're talking about, the sorts of things we're showcasing, and then to demonstrate for themselves what this can do for the business. So what does that platform look like? And of course, importantly, here at Spark Summit, it will be remiss of me not to talk extensively about the role of Spark in what we're doing here. We see Spark as a core part of the platform that we're building out as part of our analytics lab and as part of the production service that we now have. Primarily, and I'll be completely honest with this, this slide is quite forward-looking. It's more of an aspiration than a reality. We're not there yet. But we are building all of these parts, and we do see vast opportunities to, to leverage more of what some of the solutions like Databricks provides for us. At the moment, our primary focus with Spark is using it for data processing and job execution. And I'm going to talk in a minute about one of the major use cases that we've been working on for the last year. But we also see opportunities, going back to my previous slides, 
to, ex to create analytical applications around Spark and make those available as services within the value chain I was describing. And we're also excited about things like Delta that Databricks announced, which potentially gives us an opportunity to leverage the Databricks platform more extensively within our ecosystem. I think the final thing to to point out here is that it is an ecosystem. We're working with other companies, we're working with Alteryx, we're working with Mana, and we're trying to integrate these different technologies together to provide a cohesive advanced analytics platform. So I said I'd talk about a use case. I hope this use case will illustrate a little bit what I'm talking about. Within our upstream assets and our manufacturing sites, we hold vast quantities of spare part inventory at any given moment in time. We store those in warehouses, and we do it in order to ensure that our assets operate safely. Safety is our number one priority, uh, but we also care about uptime, of course, and we want to make sure that we keep our assets running. And to do that, we often have complex logistical supply chains and also sophisticated pieces of equipment that require spare parts that have a very long lead time. And so we store these spare parts in warehouses and we use them to allow maintenance to react quickly to an issue. The issue, though, is that historically, inventory analysis as a discipline has been done rather inconsistently across our group. We have some very good examples, and we have some not so good examples. And as a result, the collective trend when you looked at this across Shell was that over time, we were the, the cost of working capital for holding spare part inventory was increasing, and we were also seeing difficulties with our warehouses where we had, uh, were struggling for storage space. And so what we did is we partnered up with some of our colleagues in the US in, in an area where this problem was particularly acute in the Ursa uh, asset and the Brutus asset. And we worked with them to develop a set of algorithms which optimized spare part inventory. This was a very successful use case. I talked about it yesterday, um, and ultimately what we were able to do was demonstrate that by creating a digital product for the inventory analyst that presented the algorithms, but also the related information through a web browser, we were able to, to first of all pay for the project within about four weeks, and secondly, deliver millions of dollars of business benefits very, very quickly. But this also created a problem for us, and, and the problem was that we were a bit too successful, and the business wanted to roll this tool out globally. And the question for us was, how do you scale an algorithm out into production in such a way that it can run very, very efficiently and be part of a system that's going to allow us to optimize our global spare part inventory? And so what we tried to do was develop uh, an architecture and work very, very closely with Databricks on this to optimize the algorithms which were developed in R and run this at scale uh, using Databricks and Spark. And the results were pretty phenomenal. We were able to improve the processing uh, from about 48 hours down to about 45 minutes. And that really unlocked something for us, and it unlocked something which links back to what I was talking about. One of the challenges that we have is we would have no issue with people developing algorithms. We have many people in Shell who can do that. The challenge is, can we, first of all, get the business on board with this in such a way that they embed these algorithms into their core business processes? And the second thing is, can we replicate? Can we use our global scale? Can we execute this globally in production in such a way that this becomes part of the way we do business? And therein lies the challenge, and this is why I've been so excited by the results that we've, we've got from, from Spark and from Databricks, because it really lays a foundation for that global scalability that I'm talking about. So I said we're live. I talked about the importance of our platform, of Databricks, of Spark, of the ecosystem. I talked about the role uh, of digital disruption in our core value chain, the efficiency, the effectiveness, and also the adjacency. What we're doing now is we're starting to look at similar global use cases that we're excited about, and we want to work on those with Databricks and Spark to try to do similar things to what we've done with spare part inventory. So we're looking at e-mobility. As I mentioned, Shell recently acquired an e-mobility business. There's a potential for us to provide smart charging capabilities to customers, providing them with cheaper prices, providing the electricity providers uh, with more demand forecast. We're looking at weather forecasting. 
which with, we think there's a huge opportunity for us in trying to take the data that Shell captures around weather, augment that with other data, and provide differentiated weather forecasts which provide us with better insights into the, the demand and supply patterns uh, around energy and in particular around electricity. And also, we see massive opportunities in machine vision. Machine vision for us is, is a really exciting uh, technology because what it allows us to do is we are a very, very physical industry. We, we operate a physical value chain, we move physical hydrocarbons through it, and many times we have people taking observations of that and then documenting, documenting those observations in systems. If we can use CCTV cameras on site to stream data and process that in real time and provide those sorts of observations automatically, that's very, very exciting for our, for our core business. So I'll close, but I think, as, again, thank you for listening. I think I'll leave you with three things. The first is that the energy transition and the data transformation is making a huge impact on, on our core business. The second is that we see a big opportunity to leverage advanced analytics as part of our core value chain to provide more efficiency, more effectiveness, and more adjacent services. And the final thing is that we're excited about the potential of Spark to provide a scalable foundation for global replication for many of our use cases. Thank you very much. Uh -huh.